questions. Yo, 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 what's good, people? Welcome to the channel. Shout out to everybody in the stream. Let me know where you guys are from. Let me know what you do. Today is part one of a five-day series. I'm about, we about to go, we about to go in heavy on the sync talk. Um, so this is what we're doing. The year is coming to an end, right? We're going into 2024. We heard some updates on the whole, you know, screenwriter strike coming to an end and them, you know, reaching a tentative deal. So that's dope. Um, so with that, we're going to see a lot of content coming back into production and post-production. Um, most likely, you know, after the new year. I know when things are normal in the TV and film space, um, January is kind of slow a little bit. Um, well, I say like the beginning to mid January, then things start to pick up by February. Like everybody's all in. Um, so I think it's going to kind of be the same thing. And they, I don't know, they may even want to get a head start. And then January just starts to get lit. Hold on. Let me, this dang on heater off, bro. I'm hot. Um, so we got to get ready. We got to get ready for 2024. So over the next five days, this is day one. I am going to walk you through building a sync strategy, getting you focused so you know what you're doing in 2024. You're not just out here, just all willy nilly and don't know exactly what you're trying to do. You're all over the place, fam. Get focused. So I'm going to help you get focused this week. So today's going to be part one. Uh, we're going to dig into it and then obviously I'll open it up for Q&A. I got IG over here hanging out with me as well. Shout out to the people on IG. Um, so yeah, let me see. Um, YouTube people, produce producer Cam Jukes, what's good, man? Welcome to the stream. Good to see you, Justin Artis. What's up, artist, producer, engineer, A&R in Baltimore, Maryland. Super dope. Antonio Dean from the Bahamas in the building. I see you. What's good? Let me uh, let me get. I haven't streamed every every time I haven't streamed in like three weeks. I gotta like get my setup all set back up and whatnot. Um. We got Big Roderick over here on IG. We got Daniel on the keys. What's good? Um, J Illumination was good. Soul Vibe Music. Um, yeah, time to be ready so we don't have to get ready. Exactly. Like, stay ready. You don't got to get ready. Everyday Runway is in the building. What's good? We seen Everyday Runway at the Shades of Sync Conference in Atlanta the other Saturday. Um, if you missed that, I'm sorry. You just, no, I'm not sorry. You just missed out. <laughs> you just you missed out on an experience make sure you're there next year because i i just i don't know I, i'm speechless um because the whole thing was a vibe um so today we're going to talk about we're going to talk about picking a genre um and the trickiness that comes with picking a genre when it comes to sync um i i i a lot of producers hit me up and um you know from time to time there's this uh i don't know there's there's this there's this disconnect when it comes to sync and which genre you should do for sync and yeah so we <laughs> we're gonna break that down because that is that's a whole conversation just in its in itself so uh so let's dig into it part one of you know this sync strategy 2024 Picking a genre, you have to decide what your target genre is. Now, this is the tricky part because as a producer, as a creative, naturally, you want to do your favorite genre, whatever genre that is. You may just have a particular genre that you gravitate towards that you're just like, yo, I think this is the dopest thing on the planet they need to take this music sign it and get it synced and then it doesn't happen and it doesn't work that way and then you're like sync licensing is a scam so <laughs> let's give you some insight on how you can avoid that frustration because a lot of producers go through it and they think oh sync licensing is so hard it's like it's the most impossible thing to break into um and it's not necessarily true it could be because the genre you do just isn't a genre that is needed a lot so this is how 
um, you kind of overcome that. So it, it's, it's finding this balance between what works well in sync and what you love to do as far as production. Now, sometimes, um, you know, things align and the, your favorite genre to produce is also a genre that is frequently requested in sync licensing and TV and film and micro sync and video games, whatever. Um, so if that's the case, um, then that's dope. Like you don't really have to think too hard on it. You just open up your DAW and start creating, right? Um, so some of those genres are like hip hop. Hip hop right now in sync uh, is just, uh, it's just requested everywhere. Like it's kind of hard to get away from it. You hear it. I just seen a car commercial um, using some some dope uh, hip hop track. It didn't even have it didn't even have vocals like i think it was like a like some vocal chops but it like there was no singing no rapping it was just a dope beat 808 was 808 was coming through on the television like i'm just saying shout out to whoever produced that track but um it was a car commercial and if any of you have ever seen car commercial briefs like for car campaigns and automobile campaigns like you can easily see like six figures for that stuff um <laughs> bare minimum five figures right um, so, you know, that stuff is used a lot. Hip hop, anything, um, pop, uh, you hear a lot of rock, you hear a lot of things mixed in between. So hip hop and rock, hip hop and, um, you know, country, country, hip hop, um, orchestral hip hop, like all these different, um, genres that are kind of intertwined and, and together. Um, you hear that stuff a lot. Um, pretty much anything that is on the top charts top billboard charts um is going to be something that's being requested a lot in sync because they're following trends as well like everything is kind of trend driven so you know after a while tv is there's kind of like this delay um between when when something is trending and then when tv and film starts requesting it um so now you know lo-fi has been hot for a while but now we're like finally starting to see like more requests for that stuff right um so those are like a, a few genres that um, that, you know, like, OK, this is stuff that's going to be asked for mid tempo, up tempo stuff um, that's going to be requested a lot. So if you're producing, if your favorite genre to produce if is something that is just not like requested, like like, I don't know, like some slow lounge jazz music or something or like some 60s jazz uh, like swing you know what i mean like just, just stuff this is not requested a lot like is there a need for it sometimes absolutely like there's there's always going to be a place for um certain styles of music but when you're trying to do this and you're trying to get like consistent work and consistent placements um you have to balance that off with genres that are just consistently requested so if your favorite genre is to produce is something that is just not requested a lot the next step for you is to figure out, you know, some of the other genres that get requested a lot. Um, you can do this by, you know, watching TV, um, listening to what you hear the most, jotting down, you know, the genre that you hear the most tempo. Is it slow? Is it medium? Is it up tempo? Um, making note of like the things that you hear the most on a movie or on a TV show or on commercials, like sit there for like an hour and just pay attention to all the commercials um, or sit there through a whole episode and then just like listen to the cues that are playing on a reality show versus a documentary versus, you know, something comedy or something. You know what I mean? Like just sit there and like really, really listen um, to what's being used. That's like the biggest clue to figure out uh, what's being requested a lot and what will always have a, a need. Sports music all year round like sit there listen to sports college football is in play shout out to the ohio state university we just whooped on uh who do we play oh some whack team uh michigan state um pretty much any college football team in the state of michigan sucks when you ask a buckeye so um shout out to the buckeyes on winning but um but yeah like sports is all year round so you like i know if i'm not working on a brief I know I can sit down and throw some brass, throw some uh, some some tubular bells and some strings and some, you know, some dope drums. And like, I know that's going to be used on, in sports somewhere or like reality TV. Like they just use that stuff a ton 
all year round so i'm not wasting time creating something that's not going to be asked for uh <laughs> i knew lw talking about boo buckeyes lw lw is a, our official buckeye hater on the youtube youtube channel um what's up excello <clears throat> but um yeah so like that that's how you have to figure out so um now if you you naturally do stuff that's already popular on the on you know on the charts or at least like sonically is just it's there um uh, then you don't have to you know you don't have to search too far because this stuff is being requested all the time um so identify a genre figure out which genre you want to start with um and the reason why i say pick one especially if you're just getting started in sync is because it's it just it's focused it makes it easier um it makes you come across as a specialist and people like to work with people who specialize in things so if a, a publisher sends you a brief um uh, you know they want to know that you're going to deliver like at the highest quality you know what i mean they want like authentic sounding um music per whatever genre the genre is right so if it's like latin music um like they want that joint to sound authentic not somebody who like never produced lap music and like just trying to do it just because they trying to get a sync like you can hear that a lot <laughs> like they can hear if you just like you just trying um so don't do that do what like feels good and natural to you something that you can do a lot over and over and over again um and then if you don't have that specific genre that is already being requested then you may have to pivot and this is where like a lot of producers struggle because they feel like yo like what i do is dope like i have this original sound you know it's, it's never been <laughs> it's never been heard before I, why, why do people say that all the time i i've this my sound has never been heard and then you play it and it sounds like everything else um <clears throat> you know like it's not that's the wrong approach to take in sync you know sync they're not looking for like a new fresh undiscovered sound you know when it comes to especially production music like they just want what what they already know works like what's trending they just want that give them that um don't overthink it don't try and be like this super fresh innovative creator um uh, with just you just so left field that it don't even make sense because you're gonna have a hard time breaking in the sync there's times to be super experimental and then there's times to just please the client just deliver what the client is asking for um like i always say you're in sync to serve so figure out how you can serve the client and what they need and then just give them that and then once your foot is in the door there'll be opportunities for you to do you know different things different genres um i've done i've done everything from like hip-hop r&b music to like folk to like uh children's stuff to like quirky just all types of stuff ambient stuff the investigative cbs news stuff um all of that stuff and when i started i just started with one genre um so and that was r b hip-hop and I, I still do that so um there'll be opportunities for you to kind of branch out but if you're trying to get your foot in the door in the sink pick a target genre focus on that be great at that get your foot in the door and then expand you can even expand kind of like on it, horizontally meaning like you may sign with a company with a publisher right but you may not do like five different genres for one publisher so instead you expand horizontally and then you do a publishing deal with this publisher you do r&b hip-hop with them you do a publishing deal with this publisher you do uh ambient music with them you do another deal with another publisher you do um i don't know uh i don't know whatever the next genre that you want to do right um, so that's how you kind of expand horizontally while still maintaining that look of being a specialist to each publisher like there's probably publishers that i work with they probably didn't even know i do like some of the other genres that i do but that's fine like i'm still able to be as creative as i want um while still being able to make things easier for each and every publisher um so that's uh that's that's part one um decide your target genre and i got homework for y'all like y'all ain't about to just get off the stream and just go sit and do nothing the homework is for you to watch TV, like I mentioned before, watch TV and listen 
to what you hear the most and then join that with a style that you love to produce like that's how you join both worlds what you love to produce and what you're hearing the most join those together and this is going to be the key in picking one style that you're going to produce so tomorrow when we come back i'll be back on here every day 10 a.m um, so tomorrow when you come back i want you to have a genre and you're going to drop it in the chat because i want to see if y'all did y'all's y'all's homework so make sure you come back tomorrow at 10 a.m um but now we're gonna open up for questions man if you guys have questions drop them in the chat zim zada's in the building i see you um universal king what's up spacious bro thank you for this live stream loving, loving the knowledge no doubt man um Laron land i hope that all is well with you indeed man i appreciate that uh let me see what we got over here on on ig Lots of 10 years ago, hip hop on them house hunting shows. <laughs> Yo, because they be using like this super dated catalog of music, man. They need to refresh that stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's so true. And then what happens a lot of times, man, I, um, oh, I haven't posted it yet. I have a, uh, I got to check in with, with my, <laughs> my editor, but I have a, a placement breakdown coming to YouTube, right? Um, it, I, it'll probably be up this week. Um, but it was a track that I think I, I produced it in 2016 and like, it just got placed on a Netflix show, um, this year. So like sometimes the track could be super old, but then once those editors get in there, man, those editors start pulling it and, and placing that music from, you know, from the libraries that they work with, Dep depending on who the editor is, he probably thought that joint was fire. He's like, Oh man. This is lit. 10, 10 year old hip hop track, man. So it's it, like your music doesn't get old in this space, man. Like, you know, uh, it'll be crazy to see. Um, I've been in sync for 10 years now. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see, you know, 20, 30 years from now, like what tracks that I produced 10 years ago still get in place like another 10, 20 years from now. So that should be that should be interesting um everyday one runway says if i work with a producer who doesn't mix and master what's your opinion on a fair fee split if i'm paying out of pocket for mix and mastering and he is only making the beat um hmm that's a good question um i don't know like i think <clears throat> I, I i've always mixed and mastered everything I think I would still do like a 50 50 split. Um, and then maybe just, I can do 50 50 split and then just, um, just write that fee of paying for the mix and mastering off and just use it as a, a, ta a tax write off. Um, that's probably how I would approach that. Or if you, you link up with somebody who mix and masters and they're okay with taking a percentage versus paying you could do it that way um that way they kind of get some residual income but um i think i think i would probably just go the route with just paying the paying the fee um because the producer technically you know mixing mixing and mastering is technically a different service than production right so the producer did his job as far as producing the instrumental um so I would still give them 50 um, and then you as the writer taking 50 and then just pay the mix and master um, <clears throat> whoever's doing that, you know, whatever their fee is and then just uh, just be done. But that's that's probably how we handle it. Um, producer Cam Jukes. Um, there's a feeling of abundance in here. You already know, man, that's how we get down um so can you speak on getting an nba placement i just got one for nba mx fantasy q per my bmi work catalog via my representation um i've gotten a lot of stuff on detroit pistons it's the same tv like it, it airs on tv you get royalties for it um you know i i don't i haven't seen any like upfront syncs from that stuff um mostly just back in royalties so nine times out of ten that's probably what you'll end up seeing um, especially if it's like, you know, game highlights, pregame, halftime, postgame show stuff. Um, most likely this is going to be royalties. <clears throat> but yeah, Detroit Pistons were like, <laughs> all season long was just queuing up a bunch of stuff. 
Um, let me see what, what IG talking about over here. Um, let's see. For the newbies, where to start? <clears throat> um, start with, there's a free video. The link in my bio. If you're on IG, click the link in my bio. Um, and you can start there. Um, if you want like a step-by-step -step process, like my whole blueprint, the road to 10 placements is available. By the way, I don't know if y'all knew this or not, but there is a flash sale going on. All courses for producers, including the road to 10 placements, is 50% off if you use the code Black Friday 23 um, So for IG, um, hit the link in my bio. You'll see it. If you're on YouTube, hit the, the link in the description. The code is down there in the, the description as well. Um, take advantage of that because I don't do I haven't I don't do a lot of discounts. I haven't done a lot of discounts this year. Um, probably won't do a lot of discounts next year uh, because honestly, man, the, the information is is worth way more than what I charge. So to give an, an additional 50 percent off is insane. So take advantage of it. I want you to get the information going in 2024 um, and it won't be. I don't know when I'm going to cut it off. Um, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe the end of this week. I'm not sure. So whatever it is, just make sure you take advantage of it. It's 50% off um, every, all of the courses that are up there now. And then also make sure you get on the wait list for the, the sync producer growth pack 2.0 that's dropping on black Friday. It will be limited in availability. Um, uh, I think, what did we do last year? I think a hundred or something like that. Um, so get on the wait list so you'll be the first to know so that you can get your hands on it um, before everybody grabs that joint and you can't get access. Um, so get on the wait list for that. Link to that is in the description as well. If you're on IG, just comment the word wait list and I'll shoot you the link so you can get on that. Um, do you think it's worth it to drop instrumental albums? Yeah, absolutely, man. Like, listen, do everything except leave your music on your computer and do nothing with it. Like everything, like create an instrumental album, put it on the streaming platforms. Like you never know that joint gets put on playlist. Um, spins start going up, do that. Um, get in the sync, like, uh, like everything, man. The goal is like, as a producer, you can literally create music from your brain, like out of thin air. And then like, monetize it immediately and then it can make royalties for you for the rest of its life so you'll be dead and your music is still working on tv things like that um and it's still gonna be generating royalties so like your kids will probably be still collecting royalties that you'll get um uh, from all the sync placements and, and things like that that you'll be getting um as long as like as long as you're consistent and creating and submitting and forgetting and then rinsing and repeating um <clears throat> like you got to get it off your hard drive man because it's valuable like people need music um content creators need music podcasts need music tv shows need music movies need music um not the like the strike is over um content content span across like streaming platforms has been increasing like every year like it's it's in the billions like per streaming platform like they're just like dumping money into content so like all of these new shows that they're creating they're about to go insane now that things are about to open back up and they're, they're about to get back to work so like all of these shows series um documentaries uh, original like netflix originals and uh you know prime video originals like all of that stuff needs music like all of these like these corny christmas movies that they drop on hallmark and like <laughs> all all these streaming services they all need music like i just wrapped up um like two two new christmas songs um to get out there because like christmas that's another hack like christmas music it comes around every single year so like every year you should be creating some type of christmas songs um to add to your your catalog for sync because you know for a fact it's coming every year holiday songs christmas songs all that stuff so um yeah like do what you got to do man to to make that music work for you um i don't know anything else that you can create for free and then flip it and monetize it and make it work for you while you sleep um the bureau what's up um let's see let's see let's take some ig questions what's up james 
garden music in the building great meeting you at shades of sync too if uh if they want apples just give them apples exactly in my journey i contact many gaming ad and music supervisors etc but no one respond i made folder except etc send selective tracks but nothing works still unsuccessful in making my first placement um there so there's a breakdown somewhere in in the process um so either it's it's music they don't need um either the quality um may need to be improved on the music um that could be mix it could be production it could be sound selection um or it's just something that they don't need whereas your production could be great it's just not something that's needed right now um it could be especially if you're going music supervisor route they probably just prefer to go to publishers that they already work with so a good question to hit up uh, a music supervisor was like hey what publishers do you prefer to 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 work with or where do you source your music from and then go out and reach out to the publisher and get in their catalog and now you're where they already look for music um, and it could be how you reach out to them. It could be the the uh, the pitch. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah. So if you <clears throat> I'm not sure if you have the roll to 10 placements, um, if you don't have that, get that because that walks you through like production, preparation and presentation, like how to present it, how to produce it and how to prepare it. Make sure the business and everything is right so you can minimize publisher rejection. Um so yeah d thoughts on disco.ac shout out to disco.ac we chopped it up with disco at shades of sync i think it's dope use it all the time man um it just makes makes things easier makes sharing files easier creating playlists all that stuff it just it just makes it easy um shout out to road to 10 so far landed two in a library super dope congrats joshua love to see it holidays are coming up what plugins or sounds or vsts are you excited about what do you recommend for brass strings live drum samples um plugins or sounds plugins man um uh, i uh, omnisphere 2 highly recommend um native instruments complete ultimate it's like that's just gonna set you straight for a lot of things then once you get into uh i like boom library for a lot of like sound design sound effects stuff um really dope for like cinematic sounds um i've, I've bought some stuff from them plugins um plugin alliance always has like crazy dope deals and plugins this is not going to be helpful for um my black friday plugin music gear addiction binge thing that happens around <laughs> this time of year um uh, but plug in alliance dope stuff um lander lander has some some really dope um some really dope uh what you call it um plugins and stuff in their in their suite um i have a discount i have a discount link for them too um just i think it's just clintproductions.com slash lander if i'm not mistaken um, but click that they have like a whole suite of, of things where it's just like super simple easy to use uh, I've been using their their AI mastering plugin which is super dope um, so definitely worth checking out as far as brass and strings native instruments is you know where all my brass and strings is coming from um, what's the other the other company um, ah, I can't remember Michael Connor uses it when he comes on the stream he I, I can't remember but they have dope strings and stuff too um who registers the music with their pro the artist or the producer how does pitching work between the artists um uh, meaning do we just communicate where each is pitching so we don't double pitch yeah communication is 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 key um just kind of knowing hey i'm i'm pitching this for this um usually and it depends it depends on the situation so if you work on a song right and say it's for a publisher and it's like an exclusive deal then obviously that's the only publisher that song can go go to um so that makes th that makes things a little easier because it's just like we know we can't sign this anywhere else so this is just where the song is going to live um for the length of the agreement um so that's that if it's non-exclusive then yeah just making sure hey you know is it okay if if we pitch this um to this or just kind of keep keeping them in the loop on uh on what's going on or any opportunities that may that may pop up 
Um, as far as who registers it, usually once you sign it to a, a pub, um, they will, the publisher will register it for y'all on y'all's y'all's behalf. Um, and then if not, then depends on who you're with. Cause I think if you register a song and say both of you are with BMI, then only one person has to register it. Um, and I think that may even be the same if it's ASCAP and BMI. Um, CSAC, if it's like a, a writer with CSAC and then somebody else with BMI or ASCAP, I found that I would still have to register it with CSAC for things to kind of show up right on, on my end. Um, so that's usually how it works. But usually we just we let the publishers do that for us. And then we just kind of go in and double check, make sure they, they did it right, because they will do it wrong sometimes. Um, did I see somebody say send a hug to uh, Estudio de M Brazil? Send some send some virtual hugs to Estudio. Um, so yeah, that's usually how that works. <clears throat> uh, been using Landern Mastering for years. Great company. Yeah, super dope. And they, I mean, now it's like writing your DAW. Like the plugin is just. It's right there, so you don't even have to go through the website or like have internet. Like you can just, it's dope. But Logic though, y'all hear about Logic? Logic has AI mastering now, built right in um, to their their newest update. So I haven't played around with it, and it's on the iPad, Logic Pro for iPad too. So Logic is just like, nah, y'all ain't about to y'all ain't about to leave us behind with the uh, with the technology. Um, so yeah, let me, let's take some questions from Instagram, man. See what, uh, see what my IG folks are talking about. Um, the one info for a while diamond indeed. Um, do you use disco? Absolutely. I'll use disco.ac. Um, you can be dead and still working. This is why we're here. exactly. You can literally be dead and like making money. Like it's crazy. <laughs> it's facts though. Um, and I think the life of a copyright is like, what is it the the life of the of the owner plus 75 i think or 70 it's like 70 ish somewhere around there um so it's 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 crazy it, it really is like when you think about it man like i don't i, I don't know that that's that's why i talk that's why i geek out on this so much man because it's like yo like seriously like i can just sit here and make some music and as long as you know who to send it to, what they're looking for, how to structure it and format it and all that stuff, like, and then it starts getting used and placed, like what, like you just created an income generating asset for free. Of course, after you buy your gear, I mean, like, I don't know, I mean, I don't know too many businesses where you can do that, where you can just like think of something. I just thought of a beat and made it and then just started getting paid for it. Residual royalty is like, it's crazy. Um, Isaac Hayes Jr. and his mom got a check from the Rick Ross um, and Meek Project. Yo, yo, I, Isaac Hayes um, the third, he'll tell you about Sync as well. Like, <clears throat> um, he, he, he used, I think that was like his initial seed money to fund um, fan base, the his social media platform fan base. Um, so yeah, he'll let you know, like you just go to the mailbox and collect checks from his music being used in, in TV. It's the best, the best cat. It's not much of a secret now because of me and my, my sync friends, big, big miles talking about sync all the time, but it's one of the, I mean, it's one of the best ways to, to monetize your music, if you ask me. Even Tubi has shows. Yo, facts. Yo, Tubi's movies are trash. But listen, <laughs> it's a sync opportunity, man. Like, you you know, it is what it is. They need music, too. Um, <laughs> And you can see, you can easily see, man, like, you know, a three $500 sync on, on some of these, like, independent films and things like that. If they're using a song on the scene man you can you know it's, it's listen there's opportunities out here there are opportunities um 
what's a good template work schedule to maximize productivity and avoid burnout that's a good question um actually i talk about that in, in the sync producer growth pack um for those who got the one last year i touched on that um and i'll probably i'll probably include that information in there uh, um on this one as well um just because it's it's so needed um but it's like I, it's a whole process like your schedule is gonna you know everybody's schedule is different but the concept the principles is, is they're they're built off of the three you know three categories um that i use personally which is like things that only you can do things you can automate and things you can delegate um so i go in depth like um on that so get on the wait list so you'll have access to all of that because i dive deep into that stuff and like now with ai it's taking it it's taking it to a whole nother level <clears throat> a whole nother level so all right let's see let's take some more questions man uh shout out to everybody in the stream man let me know where you guys are from let me know what you do drop your questions um this week every day i will be live here on youtube here on ig at 10 a.m we're talking about sync strategy 2024 so every day uh we're basically building uh, your sync strategy going into the new year um this was part one deciding your target genre um so make sure you come back um every morning saw logic has ai mastering they own it right now yeah facts um audio sparks do you still think that audio sparks is a good stock library to use let's talk about them um i think they are a good stock library to use like i i see stuff royalties i've had um i've had some um some cool opportunities through them however their <laughs> their upload and metadata process at least the last time i uploaded something on there was so time consuming it was like a day like he was like yo block the day off to fill out everything you gotta fill out for audio sparks man that's what it felt like for me so oh shoot i'm unplugging stuff with my foot um that turned me off man because like as a creator i'm not i'm not trying to spend all day like and like just it was so much like i'm i'm talking we're going beyond basics we're going beyond a few keywords genre bpm mood style writer info it was so intense i was like bro i'm not doing this for every single track now you know the the hack to that <laughs> if you like them and you you know you see success with them is to delegate it and that that audio sparks would absolutely be under the, de the delegation column um because it was that was too much compared to other publishers that i work with where it's just like it's not nearly as deep as that um you know so yeah but you'll get like some radio stream plays and like playlist plays and your music could get added on a bunch of playlists and a bunch of different albums so you'll rack up like some streaming royalties you know probably some sync stuff but for me man the the amount of work just didn't it didn't make it didn't make sense so excuse me that's my thought on audio sparks but it's a legit company like you're gonna get you'll get you know get some things moving um um shades was great congrats to you and josh for putting on such a wonderful event are there other conference conferences that you've gotten a lot of value from attending thanks clint um thank you um so uh i got a lot of value out of pmc's conference um i attended virtually um uh, was it i didn't go this year last year and possibly the year before last a lot of value because it's like it's focused on production music um so i got a lot of insight out of that um i've been i've been to taxis conference which was cool um i'm not a taxi member anymore that was like kind of the the path i took when i first started because it really wasn't any many other paths to take um but there was a lot of information there um i also like to go to uh 
NARIP's, NARIP's events. Um, NARIP has like a lot of sync events and like, you know, workshops and stuff that they do. Um, I find a lot of value in those because the the price are a little bit higher, like especially if you're talking about like a few few hour event. But the the audience is smaller because of that. And literally music supervisors and, and publishers are able to like listen to everybody's music and will like crit critique it on the spot. And, I, you know, I've gotten deals through that stuff and gotten placements um, as well. So I think those are, are extremely valuable. Spitfire, that was the company I was thinking of. Thanks, uh, Scott Bird. Um, Spitfire does have some some cool strings and brass stuff too. Um, thanks, I had that same situation. It took a while, a whole day. Got playlists and radio play strings, but yeah, I totally agree. That was a <laughs> it was crazy. I'm telling you, man. I don't like they. I don't know what they could do, or like if it's just no way around it. But and I've I've talked to other composers and we all said the same thing. It was like, yeah, bro, like we're not, we're not doing that a lot because <laughs> it was it was so much. It was I was exhausted. Like I I just been on a laptop on this couch all day and I'm exhausted. Why? It was crazy. <clears throat> uh, let's see what questions IG has. East West has some good stuff. I've used East West strings. Um, a little while back logic on the ipad is dope uh yeah i'm not mad at it best plugins for christmas music native instruments no so native instruments i purposely was it i think it was last year i was working on christmas music and i needed some nice mallets just some some mallet stuff because christmas music use mallets there's xylophones and other things that use mallets so uh native instruments has some type of mallet plug-in let me look it up um but yeah i bought that either i bought it or i, or I think i no, i think i upgraded my uh my complete because it included the mallets let me find out the real name while i'm just calling it mallets um mallet flux that that joint <clears throat> um yeah mallet flux by native instruments um you you will hear that um in all of my my christmas music on, on tv and film uh finished up a couple songs uh this past past couple weeks it had it had that in there um there's another sound in Omnisphere 2. It's like some I think it's I think it has Santa in it or something like that. Um but it's bells. It's, it sounds like like some sleigh bells kind of stuff. I use that. Um and pretty much I just created like a just a holiday template. So I'll have all those sounds on there. Um and it, you know, everything I do, you know, that and then obviously like your piano i may use some some rolls for like the the christmas r&b stuff um piano and roads um so yeah <clears throat> those are like my go-to sounds for for christmas music and there's like a, a stock logic um percussion sound that kind of sounds like you know like some sleigh bells or something so yeah, lots of lots of bells and mallets. And it's crazy cuz like for like Christmas hip hop, Christmas trap stuff, this is like making a trap beat and just throwing like some mallets and some sleigh bells in that joint. It just gives it a Christmas vibe immediately. It's like it's so easy. Um <clears throat> All right, let's see. We've got time for a couple more questions. Um Somebody said, do they make those Tubi movies trash on purpose? I don't know, man. It's just really, really... The things you see is just like... Wow, like, y'all didn't notice that? Like, the, I seen... Y'all know how, like, they be posting stuff on IG, laughing at the, the Tubi movies? There was one where it was, like... It was supposed to be a cohesive scene. 
and like two dudes like walked from one room to the next and the, and one of the dudes had a completely different suit on <laughs> like somebody like y'all got to notice this stuff man like you can't change an entire suit the color the style and everything and just expect nobody to notice that man like i would notice that but i i, I don't understand <clears throat> so um <laughs> groover i've never used groover um patreon um i haven't used patreon personally i know my wife she uh she subscribed to some some people on patreon but um she she liked it um are you aware of aimp they have a chapter in atlanta now you know what no i've heard of it i gotta i gotta look into it but i've heard of them um so yeah last question from everyday runway she says are you registered with your pro as yourself or under llc s corp um i am registered as myself as a writer and then as a publisher i'm registered as the register as as the llc of the publishing company <clears throat> but then you're you know, each you can't have the same publishing company name with every PRO, even though your publishing company LLC may be one name. Right. So, for example, to make this make sense, um, I have a publishing company named Clint Music Publishing LLC. So that company is registered as a publisher with the three pros to be able to collect on the behalf of writers who are with each pro. So um with csac is clint music publishing but then with ascap it's like um what is it uh it's i think it's music by clint or something like that or published by clint something like that and then with bmi i think it's published by clint or something it's like it's different because they, they can't be the same for whatever reason so you got to give them a, a few different options but what I did was just file like a DBA <clears throat> with all those three names for Clint Music Publishing LLC. That way, if they like make a check out to like publish by Clint, you know, a royalty check from BMI or whatever, or music by Clint, whichever one, um, it'll, you know, it'll make sense because that DBA was uh, was registered. So that's how I did it. But yeah, as a writer, like if you're just a writer, producer, um, you know, just use like your, your government name. It just makes life easier for everybody. <clears throat> um, Antonio Dean, I won at Shades of Sync and wanted to know um, what are some of your go-tos in Mixbox? Oh, super dope. Um, so I have, I don't have Mixbox desktop. I think you have Mixbox desktop. Shout out to everybody who won some IK stuff. Um, I have Mixbox on, on, uh, iPad. So let me see. Let me see if I can pull it up. I don't know if I saved the template. Um, uh, no, I don't, let me see. I don't think I did. Oops. Nope. I don't want to do that. Did I? I didn't. So what I did when I wait, 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 wait. Uh oh, hold on. I might have. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. So the compressor um, is definitely a go-to. This is like for those who don't like if if you do any type of production on the iPad, IK Multimedia has um y'all can see it on instagram ik multimedia has a mix box for ios and it's like having all of their stuff on ios like it's amazing um but compressor i use the british eq and that saturator x that that joint that saturator x shout out to uh diy music biz put me on to that joint 
um, that will warm some things up. You put it in the oven and set it to 350. That that's what that saturator X does. Um, so those are like <clears throat> those are three that I'll usually have on the chain. <clears throat> You can throw that saturator X on like on anything. I've used it on vocals, 808s, kicks, um, drum buses. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Talking too much. But um, yeah, so those are like three go to's that, I, that I'll use. And then from there, I'll kind of experiment with like some of the templates that they have. Um, and then just kind of, you know, tweak things. Um, there may be a template that I like and I may tweak like a couple things. Um, but yeah, also Antonio, man, um, uh, email, you can email, email it, or I don't know, however you want to do it. Uh, DM email would probably be easier, but email me like, I don't know, a picture of you using that or a video saying, you know, that you wanted at shades of sync. Um, e send email that to us if you can, like info at sync, uh, sync sessions live.com. <clears throat> Cause what I'm going to do. I'm going to send that to IK Multimedia um, and, and then we're going to post that and tag them in it so they can they can see you using it. They'll be super happy. Um, so, yeah, definitely send us that, man. Um, and congrats again on winning that. Uh, we had let me see. We gave away two uh, two vert two copies of Mixbox. box. We gave away two copies of um piano verse which is super dope for like cinematic piano i'm working on um y'all about to hear that for the members on the youtube channel um i'm about to be working on some music for catfish so you guys are going to see that while i work on those briefs and i will be using that piano verse for some cinematic piano because they use a lot of like ambient music on that show um so <clears throat> you guys will get to kind of see behind the scenes of me working on those briefs uh, for that show and uh what else we, we gave away some some i rig stream pros so yeah man i, I told y'all if y'all didn't come to in person shades of sync y'all just man y'all missed out on all types of the goodies so yeah um is it best to create original music with royalty free loose for sync absolutely absolutely um that's always gonna be your your best bet all right so listen y'all i'm not gonna hold y'all man we're gonna get back to it i know i got some stuff to knock out as well um so net tomorrow tomorrow we back in this joint 10 a.m part two of building your sync strategy for 2024 um let me see what, what do i have on the schedule we're gonna talk about um oh yeah yeah that's gonna be that's gonna be a good one come back come back tomorrow 10 a.m instagram come back here 10 a.m come kick it with me bring your questions and do your homework watch tv listen to what you hear the most make note of what you hear the most match that with a style that you like to produce the most and then that's going to be the key in picking the one style the target genre that's what you need this is step one picking a target genre are you going to make it all week your voice is already gone i'm gonna be all right i'm gonna be all right i right, listen we're gonna get the tea popping and this voice is going to make it through this week. Uh, so that's it, man. I'm out. Make sure y'all hit the link in the description um, if you want that 50% off discount code and to get on the wait list because this Black Friday bundle is about to be crazy. It's going to have some stuff that y'all been asking for for a while. Um, so it's going to step your, your production game up. It's going to step your, your production business game up. It's going to be crazy. So get on the wait list because it's going to be limited. Um, everybody won't be able to have access. If you want access, get on the list. So that's it, man. I'm out. I'll catch y'all on the next one. Peace.